So in this video, we're looking at how uh, we construct an image using a ray diagram. We're looking at how you construct one from a point source, an extended source, and what we mean by a real image. So uh, here's our lens. And normally a principal axis would already be drawn in, but if it's not, add one in through the middle. And the focal length should be marked for the lens as well. Now, you'll often be faced with a problem where you have three rays of light coming in. And these three rays of light that are coming in are in red here. Now, they will always be carefully constructed, these light, rays of light, to make drawing the diagram as most straightforward as possible. I'm just going to talk about the idea of a point source, first of all. Now, these three rays of light are all coming from a distant source, a point source, which basically means it's a tiny spot of light in the sky, so from a very distant galaxy or a distant star. And those rays, I might just quickly draw another diagram and come back. So here's my point source, my star, or my distant galaxy. Now, the rays of light from that star or galaxy will radiate outwards in all directions. I won't draw them all. But the light is radiating out in all directions. Now when you're very close to the star, you can see that these rays of light are all diverging, they're all spreading out. So we're looking here, all the rays are pointing away from each other. But if we extend this diagram on a little bit, and look here, for example, can you see how these three rays of light are actually a lot more parallel than when they were over here when they were all spreading out? Now, if I keep extending this diagram onwards and onwards uh, for, you know, for uh, billions of light years, then you'll see that eventually the light that's coming from very distant objects, all the rays will actually be parallel. So that's why they are coming in parallel. They'd only be still spreading out if the object was very nearby. So not a telescope um, used for looking at stars, but a telescope for looking at something on Earth. Anyway, the three rays are parallel. So the first rule is this. If the ray comes through the focal point, which one of them always will, um, then you know from our first videos that in the reverse direction, if it comes in parallel to the principal axis, it passes through the focal point. So the reverse is true. If it comes through the focal point, it comes out parallel to the principal axis. So that's our first rule. Rule number one for constructing is if the ray goes through the focal point, so does it go through the focal point? Yes. Therefore, it comes out parallel to the principal axis. Remember, this is the principal axis. Number two is, if it goes through the center of the lens, and the very center of the lens is actually perfectly flat, just like a, a glass, glass um, a, a rectangular prism. So the rays that go through the middle uh, do not deviate. So they carry on going in a straight line. So does it go through the center? If it goes through the center, no deviation. And then for our final ray, we've already got this point here where they're starting to join up and it should be directly below the focal point, but my diagram's not super accurate. Uh, the third ray comes along and we just make sure that it joins up with those two, like that. So, third ray joins the other two. Now this point here, where the rays meet, is where the image forms. So if we were to put a screen here, let's imagine that was a, a white screen or a piece of paper, then that is the point where you'd have a focused image. Now. What you have to imagine is, as we discussed earlier, these three rays, if you extend them back, they eventually join up. So they've come and spread out from a star, and what the lens is doing is it's bringing those rays back together. When it brings those rays back together at one point, then we have an image, that's what it's called, a real image. Now, a real image means 
that you can look at the image as it's projected onto a screen. So that's a point source. Now we're going to look at an extended source. An extended source is the same process, just carried out twice. So here's my extended source. Now extended source might be something that's much bigger than a star um, in terms of when you see it. So something like the moon would be an extended source because when you look at the moon, you can see the top of the moon and the bottom of the moon. So same situation. Here's my lens. Same rules apply. You just have to apply them twice. Uh, we'll put the focal point in. Like so, and then always one of our rays will be passing through there, one passing through the middle, and one passing through somewhere else. Now, because it's an extended source, we can have the same thing happening from the rays that are coming from the bottom of the object. So the rays coming from the bottom of the object, one passing through there, one that's heading towards the center, and another one. I'm going to use the same rules again. Firstly, if it goes through the principal axis, it's going to come out parallel. So do that for the top row, the top and the bottom one. Through the principal axis, comes out parallel. The one that's coming through the middle, although mine is a bit wonky, so I'm going to cheat a bit. Oh dear, you get the idea. Uh, and this one that also is a bit better and passes through the middle. Okay. And the final one, which will just join the other two. Like so. And if I was any good at drawing, they should all join together at the focal point, but they clearly haven't. Uh, so please use a ruler. So, so again, they should all join together above or below the focal point. Now these come from the bottom of the object as you look at it in the night sky, so the bottom of the star, and these come from, sorry, of the, of the moon, and these come from the top. Now, what we need to see here is the points, that, the rays that have come from the top in the image, if we've got a screen here where we get an image, you can see that they're now at the bottom. And those things that have come from the bottom of the object are now at the top. So let's imagine these light came from a distant stick man in the sky, then that distant stick man would now appear upside down. So it's important to remember that the image has been inverted or turned upside down. So an extended source is the same as a point source, it's just you're dealing effectively with a point source in the top and a point source in the bottom.